Welcome to the second part of the Ansible series and in this session we are going to take a look like why Ansible is called agentless and later we are going to take a look how to install Ansible onto your local development machine so that you can develop your own Ansible playbook. Coming back to the question like why Ansible is called agentless. To answer that question here I have prepared a diagram and onto the left hand side you will see a developer uh, with his or her uh, laptop or a working laptop where he has or she has installed Ansible. And on the right hand side, you will see the remote servers. Uh, it can be on premise remote server, it can be uh, hosted on a Google Cloud platform or a AWS or any other cloud provider, but that remote, uh, server has to be remote. Okay, so now uh, there is an Ansible, and that Ansible we have installed onto the developer machines, not onto the servers. So pay attention carefully we have installed ansible on a developer machine so if i am working on my playbook then i have installed ansible on my local development machine so i will prepare my uh, ansible playbook i will write some instructions inside my ansible playbook and i i will run the ansible playbook command and as soon as i run the ansible playbook command it will connect to those servers using ssh it is same as when you try to log into your remote server using SSH. So it will use the SSH, it will connect to those server and it will execute all the required command which is necessary or which we have specified into our playbooks. So this is why uh, the Ansible is called agentless. All right, so now we know that Ansible is agentless. Now the next question comes like, how can I write the Ansible playbook and what's the extension uh, in which I should save the Ansible playbook. So as you can see onto the diagram onto the left hand side, so you need to save your Ansible playbook with the extension .yml. So YML extension is used for Ansible playbook and you have to follow the YML conventions to write your Ansible instructions inside your Ansible playbook. And here you can see I have taken a very basic uh, uh, code snippet screenshot where I have created uh, like a Ansible instruction for installing the Apache server. So this file I'm just going to save with a YML extension and then I'm just going to execute the Ansible playbook command to uh, run it on a different different server. So this is the uh, diagram which I just wanted to show you like how you're going to create and save your uh, Ansible playbook with the .yml extension. Now the next thing which you need to do, you need to install the Ansible based on the operating system which you are using. So first I will start with the Windows and as you know from the Windows 10 and Windows 11, we have the capability to run the Linux uh, operating system inside your Windows machine. So for that we will be using WSL uh, utility provided by our Windows to install the Ubuntu or a CentOS based operating system inside your Windows machine because uh, it is really easy to run the Ansible in, inside your Linux machine. So for that purpose we are going to use the WSL utility for Windows. Here onto the screen you can see there is a really good documentation from a canonical Ubuntu community and this is the official page of the canonical Ubuntu where they have shown like how to set up your WSL on a Windows 10 as well as Windows 11 machines. So here, first of all, you need to uh, install the WSL utility. So this particular section or these two links actually, uh, this is for Windows 10 and this link is for Windows 10 as well as the Windows 11. So I'll put both of the link into the description section of the video. So if you are using the Windows, then I would highly recommend to follow these uh, instruction which is mentioned on Ubuntu Canonical. Okay, so let's go through it. So this is the overview, like uh, what you need to do. Uh, Second, if you click on the WSL, then they have taken a really good screenshots like how to proceed forward. So here uh, you first go need to go to the Microsoft Store where you need to look for a Windows subsystem. And after that, you need to install that thing. And uh, once you install the Windows subsystem, then you will get this terminal and there you need to install the Ubuntu. So here, after that, you need to uh, download the Ubuntu and here you need to mention like uh, what version you need to install for the Ubuntu. I would recommend choose uh, the long term uh, LTS based Ubuntu version system because uh, Canonical has a really good support for LTS version. So I would recommend to choose the latest and LTS version of Ubuntu. So here you can download the Ubuntu and once you have downloaded the Ubuntu, then you can uh, go to this start screen, select the Ubuntu and uh, maybe the next step would be the configure Ubuntu. And here you will see the terminal where you can just log into your Ubuntu machine uh, so that you just need to provide the username and the password. 
And after that, once you have installed Ubuntu, then the first command which you need to run is the sudo apt update onto the terminal so that it can update its packages. And at last you can install and use the GUI packages, uh, which is provided by WSL for your Ubuntu so that you can use the graphical interface uh, for your Ubuntu machine. So just follow these instructions and uh, uh, set up your WSL uh, based on the Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating system. And once you have a WSL and Ubuntu set up on your Windows machine, then you can simply jump uh, to the next instruction uh, like uh, the second and the third operating system like Ubuntu or CentOS. So here I'm assuming that uh, on your Windows machine you are using Ubuntu. So you can just follow the sudo apt get install ansible command which I'll, I'll show you uh, on to my Ubuntu machine uh, that how to install the ansible. So you can just simply follow those instructions to install uh, ansible because on Windows machine you are running Ubuntu then you just need to copy these instructions over there and you can uh, just get yourself started with the answer. So here is my terminal and this is my Ubuntu machine. So first of all, let's verify the version of my Ubuntu machine by running this command. So here you can see this is the Debian based uh, operating system. So Debian based also like Ubuntu is a Debian based operating system. So all the command which I'm running over here will be uh, applicable for any Ubuntu machine. So if you are using Ubuntu on your Windows machine, then you can simply run these commands to install the Ansible. So the first command which I'm just going to run, I'll first of all clear the screen is sudo apt get update. So this is the first command I would recommend you to run so that it can update all the uh, apt packages. All right, so that has been done successfully. The next command which I'm just going to run is to inst install the Ansible uh, repository. But before that, I'm just going to run this uh, install software properties common command type yes, it will install it. Okay, that's been done. I'll clear the screen. Now I'm just going to install the repository from where we are just going to fetch the Ansible. So this is the command for installing or uh, installing the Ansible repository onto my Ubuntu machine. So I'm just going to simply hit enter. I'm just going to press enter. And here we have downloaded the repository for Ansible. And the next command which I'm just going to run is the sudo apt get update once again, because we have just recently added the uh, Ansible repository. So this is the command to update the uh, repository definitions over here. And here we can see our uh, Ansible repository has been updated. Okay, I'll clear the screen. And the final command which I'm just gonna run is the sudo apt get update install Ansible. And hit enter, type yes. All right, so here you can see our Ansible installation has been finished. So I'm just gonna clear the screen and I'm just gonna run the Ansible version command to verify the version uh, i would say i'll clear the screen once more i need to add one more dash over here to get the correct version and here you can see this is the version uh, ansible 2.10 which we have installed onto our ubuntu machine i'll put all this command into the description section uh, so that you can follow this command to install the uh, ansible onto your ubuntu system the next uh, we are going to do we are just going to install the ansible onto the cent os the yum uh, package manager okay so the next uh, installation which we are going to do we are just going to install onto our cent os operating system so we have covered the windows we have covered the Ubuntu the next thing which we are going to do we are going to install the Ansible onto the Sant OS so this is the terminal of my Sant OS machine I'm just going to minimize this thing so this is the terminal from my Sant OS machine so first of all let's verify the Sant OS version and the command for that is cat etc Sant OS release and it will let you know the version so here I'm using the Sant OS release 8 version so that we have verified the next thing which we are going to do we are just going to run the yum update command so that uh, uh, we update all the package manager so the command is sudo uh, yum update okay so now we have finished the yum update command so i'm just going to clear the screen the next command which i'm just going to run is the sudo uh, sorry yum install epl release and i'm just going to add sudo over here so this will basically install the EPL release package and after that we will be able to install the Ansible onto our CentOS machine. Type yes. And here we have uh, successfully installed the EPL release package. And the next command which I'm just going to run is the, I'm just going to clear the screen first of all, sudo yum install Ansible. 
All right, so now the Ansible uh, yum install Ansible command has just finished. I'm just going to clear the screen and I'm just going to verify the Ansible installation by running the command Ansible version. And here you can see uh, we have installed the Ansible 2.13.5 onto our CentOS system. The next thing which we are going to try out is we are just going to install uh, Ansible onto our Mac OS. If you are using the Mac OS, then installation of a Ansible on a Mac OS is pretty simple. Uh, you just need to rely on the brew package manager and the command for installing the Ansible is the brew install Ansible. And that should take care of the Ansible installation onto your Mac OS. So here you can see I have already installed Ansible. That's why it is sh showing me that uh, Ansible has already installed. But in case if you don't have a Ansible installed onto your Mac operating system, then you just simply need to execute Brew install Ansible and that will take care of the Ansible installation. Now after installing the Ansible, the next lab session we are going to discuss more about the Ansible project setup. So here I have taken a very brief screenshot where I have shown a project structure of uh, my Ansible project. So where I have shown like how I have created the inventory file, uh, where is my host file, what are the roles I need to create inside my Ansible playbook, uh, what does it mean by the task. Uh, and how should I set up my Ansible uh, playbook YML. So this is the project setup we will take a deep dive into for our next session.